Hello, and welcome to another installment of Practical Farms, where we take a look at different farms and make them more practical depending on where we are in each phase of the game. Whether it's early game, mid game, or late game, to where they're more cost effective to suit our needs. Today we're doing part two of tree farms. In part one we talked about both manual and semi-automatic early game tree farms, and today we'll be taking a look at mid game and late game version of these farms. It's a little more involved, but it's a lot of fun to build, so let's get to it. Now, while the mid to late game tree farm is considerably more complicated than the early game tree farm, if we stop and think about the steps that are necessary in order to accomplish what the tree farm is setting out to do, the process isn't that complicated. We just need to keep track of what each step along the way. Now the idea of this farm will be to take the logs from the newly grown trees and move them outside of the growth canopy as quickly as possible so that a new tree can be planted, bone milled, and grow without any solid blocks within this area restricting the growth of the next tree. So what we will need to do is use some sticky pistons to move this log to the side and then out this end and pushed over into a cube maker for us to be able to harvest all the logs all at one time, making it easier and quicker in the long run. The way we will accomplish this is that we need to have a double piston extender using some sticky pistons to grab the log and move it first to this side of the canopy. The way that works is you place two sticky pistons here, and we'll need to have this piston activated which would then push this sticky piston forward and once the second sticky piston is in this location it needs to receive a quick pulse that will have it extend, grab the log and move it back with it. It then would be retracted back and then be activated yet again with a quick pulse once it's in this location grabbing the log and moving it all the way to the end. Now the only way to accomplish this, since we can't place any permanent blocks alongside in order to activate the sticky pistons, is by using an observer. If we place this observer off to the side, and then put a sticky piston here, which will match the first one, we can then have this observer moved alongside at the same time as this sticky piston. The sequencing of events will be like this then. The back sticky pistons will both be extended at the same time, causing this piston and this observer to move forward, destroying these leaf blocks. At that point, our observer and sticky piston will be in these locations. When the observer is moved into this position, it will notice a block change to its right, which will then cause it to send a quick tick pulse off to this piston, which will extend, breaking this leaf block. It will then grab the oak log and move it back into this location when it retracts. At that point, the, both of these sticky pistons will be retracted, causing both the observer and the sticky piston to move back to their original locations. When they do, the observer will yet again notice a state change of the block next to it and it will then cause a pulse to extend the sticky piston grabbing the log and moving it into this location. Now that we have the log here we need to move it off to the left. The way to do that will be using a similar configuration of pistons and observers in order to grab this log and move it over here. So let's go ahead and set that up. If we put two sticky pistons there an observer facing this way with the output pointing into another sticky piston. That way when the back two pistons receive their pulse after this log is in position it will extend both the observer and the sticky piston into these locations here at which point the observer will notice a state change of the block next to it causing it to send a pulse to the sticky piston which will extend, grab this log, move it into this location, at which point both the sticky piston and the observer 
will be retracted back into their original locations. The observer will send another quick pulse to this piston, causing it to extend, grab the oak log, and move it back to here. The next step will be that we need to have another sticky piston move this log out finally outside the canopy of the tree and thus removing it so it will no longer prevent or inhibit the growth of the tree. So all we need for that to be accomplished is to place a sticky piston here and then have a regular piston here so that when this piston extends and grabs this oak log and moves it into this location, at that point this piston will then be able to push the, all the logs out into a row so our cube maker can collect and organize all the logs. Now in order to sequence these, what we will need to do is have an observer send a pulse into this piston. So we'll place a piston in this direction facing outward and then we need to have a way for it to be activated. The way we're going to accomplish this is by having a regular piston that is tied into the same signal as this sticky piston facing this direction so that when it extends to grab the log this piston will be extended as well. Now when it is extended the observer will see this and send a pulse to this piston. However, because this piston is already extended it will not do anything. It will just stay there. But when this piston retracts so will this piston. When that happens the observer will see that change as well and send a pulse into the regular piston, which will cause it to then extend, pushing the log completely out of the main portion of our tree farm. With that, we have accomplished our goal of moving all the logs out of the growth area, and we can then place a new sapling in the center of our tree farm and allow it to be automatically bone milled and grow. This is all you need in order to be able to have your tree farm operate properly and grab all the logs. However, since we have gone to so much trouble to create a system that will grab the logs, why not also include a way to automatically harvest all the leaves, collect the drops such as saplings, sticks, and apples, and store them so we can then use them to replenish our supply. The way we can accomplish that is by using the same kind of configuration that we have for these double sticky pistons to extend out and break all the leaves. So what we need to do is just come along on each side and place some sticky pistons. On this side we're going to place five because we need to be able to break all five rows of these blocks. Then we can place a regular piston here on the two center blocks, an observer facing outward on both of these, and then just place any solid block. We'll just go ahead and grab a smooth stone block, but you can use any solid block you want for this right here. Let me go ahead and reset that. Now the way this will work is that we will tie in using a repeater so it will delay the signal, but tie it into the signal that is powering our first set of pistons. So that after it has extended and moved the logs to the side, these pistons will be activated. When they are activated, this block will be pushed out, breaking this leaf block. This piston will be extended out, breaking this leaf block with the observer these two pistons will be extended and because they have observers next to them they will break this, these two leaf blocks and these two. This one will be extended pushing the observer breaking these leaves as well. If we do the same thing on this side placing four sticky pistons right here we should be able to break all the leaves on this side in the same manner. Place an observer here and here and then a regular piston on this piston and this one. We then will place a repeater between this section and this one with a delay so that it will activate after these have been broken, breaking these leaves, these two, 
these pistons will break these two and then this observer being pushed by the piston will break this one that just remains these blocks here and as you can see this is the same L-shaped pattern that these pistons have all been making so all we have to do is add something similar to this segment right there so place an observer facing outward here place double sticky pistons both here and here and then place a regular piston right there we then need to place a del some repeaters here with a delay which will then enable these to extend to break this block and then these two pistons will extend breaking these two leaf blocks now if you look you'll notice that this arrangement will leave two columns of leaves unbroken I've tried every possible arrangement that I can think of and no matter what I do there's always at least two columns of blocks that aren't broken but considering that this is covering an area of 24 leaf blocks that need to be broken having only two of them which accounts for about 8% of the canopy it's not a bad return as a matter of fact I've run tests on this and I have had more than enough saplings to make sure that this tree farm is maintained indefinitely it will provide for you an infinite supply of saplings so having two sets of leaf blocks unharvested is not a big deal as a matter of fact if you want you can just reach up and as you're plant, uh, ready to plant your next sapling break these leaf blocks that are left behind if you really want to make sure you don't miss any possible saplings or other drops from your tree now that we have the basic understanding of all the steps that will be used in order to accomplish our to make our tree farm work we need to go ahead and build it so what we're going to do is build a basic timing circuit similar to the one that we used on our early game tree farm and then add in our bone meal dispenser and other redstone circuits in order to tie all of this together so let me go ahead and clear this out and we'll begin working with our basic redstone circuits now the first step is to go ahead and place a grass block so we have somewhere to plant our saplings we need to put a solid block here so we have somewhere to put our dispenser for our bone meal then we need to go ahead and put in a timing circuit we'll go ahead and use a simple repeater clock in order to control the circuitry uh, we also need to break out these blocks here and I'll replace that dirt block with a stone block there and here as well put a redstone torch there a repeater facing in that direction and then a piece of redstone dust on that block we also will need to put a redstone torch off of this block here so that it will power the dispenser so we can automatically dispense our bone meal when a sapling is placed put a lever onto this block so we can turn it off and on and control the circuitry that way and then the next thing we need to do is add in a floor now because this area of the farm is going to be where all the leaves are being crushed and the saplings and other drops from the leaves are going to be falling instead of using solid blocks we're going to use hoppers for our floor now of course we don't want to just have the hoppers there we want to have them feed into a chest so what we're going to do is take a chest and place them right here and have the hoppers feed into it so let's go ahead and crouch place a chain of hoppers that is going to be five by five feeding into our double chest Now with all of our hoppers into place, we need to come back onto this side and put a solid block for us to stand on, as this is going to be where we plant our saplings onto the grass block right there. With them in place, all we need to do now is go ahead and put in our pistons. They're going to be used to move 
this, the tree blocks out of the way. So let's go ahead and put in four solid blocks here, and then another four behind it. Come over onto this side and place solid blocks all across here, and then a second row right behind it. Then we can come and facing this direction, put in our pistons. Let's go ahead and move these out of the way. And put our first set of sticky pistons here and here. One right there with the observer facing in that direction and the output pointing into this piston. Then come over here and place a sticky piston there and there, one in front, and the observer facing in this direction, output pointing into that sticky piston. Then place one sticky piston there, regular piston there, observer facing in this direction to where it will have the output pointing into this piston, and then one more regular piston right there. Now this is all we need for the layer that is even with where the saplings are going to be planted, as there will not be any leaf blocks growing one off the floor of our farm. The shortest it will ever be will be at the second layer. So when we come in and add all of our leaf crushers on that side and this side, we don't need to have any on the first layer. So let's go ahead and add layer number two. We'll be adding a total of seven layers all together to reach the top of our tallest regular oak tree. So all we have to do is just replicate every single block that's on this for a total of five to move the blocks and then a layer, two more layers to break the leaf blocks above it. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, with all five layers of the pistons that will be moving the logs, we're now ready to go ahead and add in the leaf crusher pistons. So let's go ahead and start on this side as they're going to be the easiest ones to put in. Beginning on the second row, let's go ahead and put in two sticky pistons here. We can put a regular piston right there. An observer facing in this direction right there. And then repeat this as well. This time though we're going to go an additional block above this. All right, so I have finished the leaf crusher on this side. Uh, you'll notice I have added two additional rows of pistons on top of the sticky pistons, both here and here, but using regular pistons instead. Uh, the reason for this is that the logs will only be five high, but we still want to crush the leaves that are sticking out uh, at this level as well, just to maximize the number of sapling drops that we get from our leaves. The next thing to do is we need to go ahead and add the leaf crushers on this side here and on that side as well. So let's go ahead and come in and put in a row of blocks here, but up one because there, we don't need any on the first layer. And we'll need to add it going four across on this side. I'll go ahead and add an extra one just so we can be ready to start adding on the next side as well. And then come and add a second row behind it. Once we've done that, we need to put in four sticky pistons. We need to put in two regular pistons here. And then one observer that way, and one observer this way as well. This will then be responsible for crushing all the leaves here to this point here, leaving the remaining ones for the pistons on this wall to crush. So all we have to do now is just go ahead and repeat this pattern all the way up to be even with the wall on the right, and we'll be ready to move on to the next wall. All right, so the pistons are in on this side, so now we just need to finish off with our fourth wall. We need to do just the same kind of thing where we come in and add in a layer of blocks here. A 
so that we can go ahead and place our pistons. The only difference is that we're going to add a fifth one here on the end to be able to crush the blocks in this corner. Let's go ahead and add in five sticky pistons on the back. We'll put in a solid block here. The pistons go in the middle with observers pointing out, the output pointing into this piston and into this piston as well. And then we just need to repeat this one as well until it reaches the same level as the other three walls. All right, so this wall is now completed. All that's left is to go ahead and put in a cap for our oak trees to make sure that they don't grow above the limit. And since we have seven pistons here, we just need to go up one more block and extend out the three blocks to be centered over the saplings growing location and then remove those temporary blocks. Now we just have to tie in the redstone circuitry. The way this is going to work is we're going to use a redstone comparator and place it here on this hopper. You'll have to crouch place in order to place the comparator. And the way this will work is that whenever a sapling that we plant here grows, it becomes a solid block. If there's any bone meal inside this dispenser, the comparator will read that and it will put an output of a signal out this end. This way it's kind of a safety feature to where if we don't have any bone meal to continue using the farm, it will just stop working and the pistons won't be activated until we add more bone meal into our dispenser. We then need to come and place a repeater off of this end of the comparator. Remove these solid blocks there and then come around this side. The reason we put the repeater there is that if there happens to only be one piece of bone meal, the signal strength coming out is only going to be one. So we need to make sure that the signal strength coming out of this comparator is boosted so it reaches all of the pistons on this side. Now we need to come in and put in some solid blocks for our redstone dust to be placed upon. So add in blocks all the way across to here. And then we'll also want to put some solid blocks along these pistons here and here going every other row. And then we can put redstone dust on each one of them. And this way whenever the redstone dust is powered it will not only power the piston that it's connected to but it will power the solid block below it which will also power the piston they are next to as well. Then we need to bring the redstone dust across here but then we need to stair step it up the side of this and we're going to do that using glass blocks. So all we have to do is add a glass block off the end of each one of these and then a glass block stair stepping down like this. The reason for this is that glass blocks do not cut off a redstone signal whenever they go up through them. And there we have it. All of these are now connected. The next thing we need to do is then have the signal extend around to the back of these pistons. So let's go ahead and place solid blocks across the same level as our other pistons. And going up every other one. And then we can place glass blocks on this side as well, so we can stair-step them down. All of these pistons now have redstone dust connecting them, but we need to tie it into the signal here. So what we'll do is just come in with a solid block coming off of here, and go to there. And then put a repeater on this block and a piece of redstone dust here. The reason for this is that the signal strength coming off of that repeater will not be strong enough to reach the last pistons uh, as the maximum length of a redstone dust line is 15 blocks. So this will just make sure that we have enough signal strength to reach all of our pistons.
The next thing we need to do is tie them into this row of pistons as well. We'll just go ahead and do the exact same thing we did on this one. These pistons all have their redstone dust added to them, so we need to do the same thing and tie it into the end of this circuit. The only difference is that when we put in our repeater, we're going to want to start adding in some delay. The reason for this is that we don't want to have the observers from this one interacting too much with the observers on the others. It just starts causing all sorts of funny business with our pistons getting left behind. So what we're going to want to do is add in a four tick delay between this side and this side. So let's go ahead and add in some solid blocks so that we can tie into our redstone line on this side. And then we'll come back in and add in our repeater, but again put it on a four tick delay. Now that this one's done, we just need to come over here and do the exact same thing one more time. All right, this one is completed, so let's go ahead and tie it into this circuit. But again, we're going to do something a little different yet again. Because this set of pistons are going to be involved in grabbing the logs and moving them over, we need to make sure that there's plenty of time for this set of pistons to complete moving the logs all the way to the side. There's so much delay involved with the way in which observers work, we just need to be overly careful and make sure that there's no overlap in the action of the observers and the pistons. So what we're going to do is not only add a 4 tick delay, but we're going to add an 8 tick delay just to make sure everything works the way it should. So let's go ahead and put in our solid blocks like this. Add in some redstone dust. And then add in two repeaters and put them both onto 4 tick delay. Again, this is just to ensure that these first pistons have enough time to get all the blocks into place and that these don't start moving before it's time. The next thing we need to do is then tie in the circuit to the pistons that are going to be moving all the logs out of the farm and into a cube maker. So the way to make this happen is we come down to the bottom and we'll add in some more glass blocks so we can stair step this down one more layer. Then we'll come in and put in some solid blocks across the bottom, feeding it over to this side here. We then need to have it step up to these blocks here, and again following the same kind of stepping up pattern like this on each of these pistons. And again, we're going to need to put in some repeaters. And again, because we want to make sure there's plenty of time for all the logs to get moved into place for these pistons and all the delay that's built into observers, we need to make sure that this one has an additional 8 tick delay as well before they're activated. So let's go ahead and add in our repeaters. Put them each onto a 4 tick delay for a total of eight ticks. Come back in and add in our redstone dust, connecting it to the circuit. Then we just need to come across here, adding the redstone dust up into each one of these. So that these will be powered. Now we're going to want to stair step up this side so that redirects the direction of the redstone dust. If we don't, whenever a log is pushed into this area right here between the pistons and this redstone dust, even though it looks like it's turning a corner and going into that, it will power through that block into this piston. We don't want to just have pistons randomly being powered. So, But if we come on this side and have the redstone dust coming, whoop, having the redstone dust coming off in a kind of T-shape, for some reason it doesn't terminate into the block and it works. It's just one of those weird quirks of redstone. It's better to just not ask any questions and go ahead and make it work. So let's go ahead and add our stair step onto this side here. 
removing these extra blocks and then just connect it with redstone dust and there we have it all of the pistons are connected everything is ready to go all that's left to do is to test our farm so let's go ahead and come down in here stand in the location where we're supposed to um, we'll need to add in some bone meal I'm just gonna go ahead and put in one stack of bone meal to test it and then go ahead and grab our sapling and when we turn on our farm we should hear the dispenser working and place our first sapling there we go it looks like it worked yep all the logs have been moved into this location and the only leaf blocks that are left are these two columns here and any ones that happen to be in the center above where the saplings are planted that's great so we go ahead and turn this off and let's do a few other little things to kind of finish this off we're going to want to go ahead and put in some walls here just to keep any saplings and other drops from being flung out no matter what you do there's going to be some that escape the farm but we can try and minimize some of that by placing some blocks here placing some over here as well placing them on top of here and placing some right there as well if we come over here we can do the same thing to kind of close off this area the only thing is that because we're going to be walking up here we want to make sure that they don't block our head so let's go ahead and just kind of leave this side open but we'll go ahead and place them along this side here Any that come this way we'll be catching anyway, so it'll be fine. I also would say it would be a good idea to go ahead and place a roof on this. And I like to use glass just because it's kind of nice to be able to look up and see the sky. But you can use any block you want to. It would be perfectly fine. And just enclose it like this. Now the next thing that we want to do is be able to come over here and build our cube maker. As these logs come pouring out, we want to be able to have it do more than just 12 times, which is the push limit for pistons. So what we want to do is create a bank of pistons that when it reaches the end, it would push them over, creating an 8x8 cube of logs. So the way to do that is pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and just make a mark of where the bottom of our floor is going to be, which will be right here and we're going to come out to where it reaches 12 blocks away from this piston so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and then this will be number twelve we'll come ahead and come behind it and add some blocks here and here And then we'll remove this last block and place one right here. Then we just come in and put some pistons. Now I like to make them 8x8, eight eight, so let's go ahead and start here at the end and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and leave this one open. That way there's space between the circuitry of the farm and the cube that we're making of logs just so we don't have a little space and don't accidentally break any of the farm when we come in to chop our trees down then come in and, and just extend it up an additional five blocks tall all right now that we have our wall of pistons in place we need to do something similar to what we did over here by coming around the back and putting in solid blocks across every other row of pistons now because of the length of this wall we need to make sure that the redstone dust will reach so instead of putting solid blocks across the top row we'll come down one and then go on this row and on this row and we already have the level here below our bottom row of pistons 
We can then come back in and add in the redstone dust beside behind each piston. And then tie them in together with the same kind of ladder stair stepping that we have on all the other ones. So put in a glass blocks on each row and then come in and stair step them up. Removing the temporary blocks and connecting them with the redstone dust. Now an interesting way in order to automatically activate these pistons when the logs reach the end of the piston line is kind of a neat little trick that you can use with a repeater and a redstone torch. What you do is you come in and place a redstone torch here underneath where the log will reach the final piston and then come in with a solid block right here and put one here and here. Put a repeater facing out this direction with some redstone dust coming off the side here. So what will happen is when a log finally reaches the end of our piston line, it is powered, which as you saw, powers our repeater and sends a signal all the way around, activating all of our pistons. Let's see that one more time. Kind of a neat little trick in order to easily activate all the pistons at one time. Now one more feature we want to add is have it to where it will automatically turn off once we reach the end of our block. And so all you have to do is just determine how long you want your cube maker to go. I'm just going to go ahead and make it an 8x8 because I, I like the fact that 8x8 is an even number. But you can make it up to 12 blocks long. All you do is just come to the end here and add in as many rows as you want. So I'm going to have it be to where we add 8 more rows. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. On this eighth block, come and do the same thing we did before. We put a solid block there, put a torch right there, and then come and place a solid block over here for us to put our repeater facing off this way. Another solid block here, and then stair stepping down this way. And then we want to have it, when it reaches this point, automatically turn off the dispenser and all the pistons. So what we want to do is tie this into our timing circuit. So what we need to do is come in over here. And I don't like to place redstone dust onto dirt blocks, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the dirt and then just bring it over in this direction to tie into here. And let's go ahead and bring it down one more in this way. This way it's out of the way and also easy to identify if we ever come in and make changes. Now because this is going to be our floor, we actually probably want to bring this down one more layer. So let's go ahead and do that. That way we can put a floor in and walk over it when we come in to use our farm. And the way this will work is that even when the system is on, when a solid block reaches the end, it will turn off the dispenser and prevent any of the pistons from then being extended. If there's still room for lo additional logs to be added, you can turn it on. But whenever it's full, it stops. All we have to do then is just come in and cover up our trench that has our redstone. Oh, got to be careful there, though. So if you want to put a block there, you'll need to go ahead and either come across like this. Or put in some slabs. But I go ahead and I like going ahead and doing this so that we can kind of create a wall as an entryway coming into our farm. Then we can even then put a block here to step up on. And there we go. Oh, we might want to have some room to be able to access our chest though, so let's leave that open. So now that our tree farm is done, I'm going to run it for a little bit, do some testing, fill up our cube maker so we can see exactly what kind of rates we get with our tree farm. I'll be back in just a moment. Alright, I'm all done testing and I've run it 
several times to completely fill up the cube maker. And this last one was probably the worst results I had out of the multiple times I ran the test. Uh, this one gave us roughly 300 logs and used up six stacks of bone meal. That's about 0.83 logs per piece of bone meal. Usually though, I'd get something closer to one piece of bone meal per log, which is pretty good, considering that normally when you run it on the early game tree farm, it usually came out closer to 10 pieces of bone meal per log. On average, I usually used up around four to five stacks of bone meal to create an entire cube of roughly 300 logs, and that's pretty good. However, this farm gets even better as this doesn't just work on our oak saplings, but it also works with birch. And if you do a little bit of a tweak and adjustment to this farm, you can even use it for spruce and jungle trees. Not the double wide ones, the single wide, but hey, variety is the spice of life. Let's go ahead and, and I'll show you how to modify it so you can use it to grow both spruce and jungle trees as well. Now spruce and jungle trees grow taller than our standard oak and even the birch trees. And since this is the block that was limiting the height of our oak trees, what we need to do is raise it up an additional two blocks whenever a spruce tree or a jungle tree is growing. However, we want it to then be lowered back down into place when we're doing the standard oak trees. So the way to do that is we're going to go ahead and use a double piston extender and place it where it's going to raise this block two blocks above where it is right now. So that means that this block will not will be one, two blocks higher. And then we need to have a piston here and here. So let's put a temporary block there. And so then let's go ahead and place two sticky pistons off of that temporary block facing down. We can go ahead and remove the temporary block. And let me go ahead and build the rest of this and then I'll explain how it works once we're done. First, come and place a solid block coming off of here like that. And then have some additional ones coming off the bottom over here. We need a redstone block right here. And then we'll have a sticky piston coming off of it like this, which will push this into place at the right time then come in with some solid blocks like this and we'll feed them over in this direction. We then need to have an observer that's going to look at that redstone block a piece of redstone dust that feeds into a repeater here and then some additional redstone dust like that. We then need to tie this into some sort of switch, which we'll bring up this way and feed up into here. And then we need a repeater on a four tick delay. So let me explain how this is going to work. Whenever there is a signal coming into our redstone dust here, it will power this piston, which will push the redstone block into this location. When that happens, the observer will detect it. There will be a two tick delay. It will then power this block, which powers the redstone dust. This needs to be on a three tick delay, so it will be up to five ticks. That way, it will be activated after this one has received a four tick delay. So the sequencing will be like this. When you turn it on, this piston will be extended, putting the redstone block here. Then this piston will extend, pushing this piston downward. When it reaches this location, the redstone block will power it. It will then extend, pushing the solid block into this location. When you turn it off, the sequencing will be reversed, where this one will be removed, causing this piston to retract this block up one, up one layer. Then this one will retract, pulling the piston with it, but leaving the block behind. And then one tick later, because, because this 2 plus 3 adds up to 5, it will then extend one more time real quick and pull the block up into its final position here, two blocks higher than it started.
Now we just need to go in and remove all these blocks, both the glass and the solid block. And then come in also and add some additional pistons so that we can break all the leaves that are now higher up and collect all the logs that will be higher. So just come in here, remove these two pistons and these two pistons, add in sticky pistons in their place, and all we have to do then is build our wall up to where it reaches this level and then finish off replacing the roof. And that's the modification we need in order to make this compatible with both jungle and spruce trees. Of course, if you're going to add that into it, you might as well add an additional two rows of piston to our cube maker. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. If we come in here and just add two extra layers. But then we also will need to extend the redstone line up to, the, to this next level as well. And of course, because this is such a long redstone line, we're going to need to add a repeater to extend the signal up to these as well. So what we need to do is we're going to come in with a solid block right here. We're going to come in with a glass block right here. So the redstone dust can pass up in this direction, but then come across with a solid block, which is going to then come around this side. So we can add a repeater right here. And then all the way along the back of this row of pistons. This should then give enough signal strength in order to power the top two rows. Sorry to interrupt the tutorial, but just as a quick note, uh, in the original build here, I had a glass block with redstone dust on top of it. This will not work as once the logs reach the end of our wall of pistons, this will create an infinite loop if you leave the glass block there. Once this repeater is powered, it will then just continually loop forever and ever and cause these pistons to stay extended and never retract again. The fix is right, quite simple. Just take out that glass block, put a solid block here, and put the redstone dust on top of it, and it will work as intended. Now that we have this capability of con switching between oak tree mode and taller tree mode, we could always come up to the top and flick the lever if we want to switch modes, but that's not the most convenient way to make it work. We can do something, though, to make it a little more convenient, and it's going to involve using torch towers. Of course, this means we're going to have to come in and make a few adjustments to the way the redstone circuit is laid out, so let me show you how that's going to work. First thing you do is remove that lever and add an extra block. Put two more pieces of redstone dust here, and then we're going to put a redstone torch tower heading downward. The only problem is that that will then interfere with our redstone signals that are going around this corner, so what we need to do is to take away these two repeaters, the redstone dust line here, and then these solid blocks, and then come down and lower it by one block. So let's go ahead and put a temporary block there and there, come across like this, add a repeater right here with four tick delay, and then add one here with a four tick delay as well, and then fill it back in with our redstone dust here and here. Then we can come in and place solid blocks coming up this way, and then add a redstone torch on every other one of our blocks. This way the redstone torch won't interact with these two repeaters, and it won't interact with the redstone dust either. Then we just come down here and continue the torch tower. Then all we have to do is add a lever here, and if we want to extend the block downward, 
we just flick the lever and you can see there it is and there we see the block lowered to blocks and if we want it to be for tall tree bowed we flick it and you see it retracted let's give it a try and see how it works with the taller saplings all right, so let's try it with birch saplings first. Now let's try it with some spruce saplings. And now jungle tree. They all work great, and you can just keep using whichever one is your favorite, and it'll continue to collect the logs for you over in your cube maker. So let's take a look. Here they are, and you can see they are taller. Of course, they can also be shorter, just like the rest of the oak logs, but they can also be taller. And besides being more wood, it's nice to have a little bit of variety available. A couple of last minute troubleshooting tips and things to keep in mind is that first, if you happen to play on a particularly slow machine or on a laggy server, you may need to add some additional delay between the different sets of pistons in this farm. If you happen to notice pistons being hung out in the middle of the air, that could be one of the causes. Another thing you need to watch out for is that occasionally beehives can spawn in this farm. For that reason, you need to make sure that you don't build this in an area that will naturally spawn beehives. Things like flower forests and the like. Otherwise, you will have to make regular repairs to the pistons in the farm. So as long as you take those into account, the farm should work just fine. And there you have it, the mid to late game tree farm. And while it's not fully automatic like it is in Java Edition, if you have efficiency on your axe, you can harvest these trees pretty quickly. And while it isn't fully automatic like it is in Java Edition, if you have efficiency on your axe, you can harvest the wood pretty quickly. But I think that's going to be it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed yourself and that it helps you out. And if you do end up using this farm in your world, I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd leave a comment down below letting us know how it worked out for you. But that's it for now, and I hope to see you again in the next one. But until then, this is Texas PK. Be good to each other. Bye.